What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. I am Brad Valdez and we have a special guest here with Derby City Dynamite uh, Coach T, uh, uh, Terry Bryant. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me today. Yes, uh, you know, it's a very exciting time because, you know, I'm trying to trying to grow, you, you know, my content. And, and also, uh, uh, Coach Bryant, uh, you, have a, uh, you have a podcast as well. I do. I have a podcast called Hits and Heels. Um, it airs on Facebook and YouTube on Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay, okay, and, and we've been chatting it up off, off, you know, off camera. So it's been, it's like, wow, you know, this is amazing. Like we, like this is my first time hearing of Derby City Dynamite, and I wanted to come out and I, I seen your podcast. Uh, um, so, so what do you do on your podcast? Well, on my podcast, I because I'm a female football coach, and there's not a lot of us. Um, that's why it's called Hits and Heels um, to hit on the hits from the. From that, and then I'm a female, so the heels. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just talk sports, but I, I try to highlight the fact that there are women. There is a women tackle football league, and um, and I'm a coach with the tackle football league, but I also coach middle school in Lexington, Kentucky as well. Okay. And, and are you from Louisville, or where did you grow up? Oh, I'm a military brat. So I'm from born in Alabama. I grew up in Kansas and and um, the military kind of brought me to Kentucky, and I kind of been stuck in Kentucky ever since. <laughs> uh, this, you know, I I did I did a really good uh, uh, like a quick interview over with the uh, Fort Knox kids. Man, uh, they were they were awesome, man. It, and uh, it's it just you know hearing those guys talk, it's like they're grown. They're, it's like they're growing up so fast, man. It, when they're, they're in their military. I'm a military brat, so I understand where that comes from. Yeah, where that comes from because we, you know, you're you're transplanted, and so you kind of have to be very, um, you know, just being able to adapt. You have to be adaptable, and um, that's the life of the military brat, um, being able to move around, and you got to move away from your friends, and and so you kind of it kind of makes you grow up and and be a little bit more mature, probably more than people that aren't military brats. Right, right, right. So, uh, okay, you have a, a son that, that plays for UK. I do. So um, my stepson, Ty Bryant, is number 14. He plays uh, safety for the University of Kentucky. T this past season, he was a, a true freshman. We can't wait to see what his sophomore season is going to look yeah, like. It's going to be crazy. The transformation from year one to year two, they say it, it, it skyrockets. It, so he finished at Frederick Douglass. So, um he played at Frederick Douglass. He was the MVP for the 5A state championship game, and he was also the Paul Hornick Player of the Year uh, last season, last year. So he entered Kentucky in January. So just from January until the beginning of the season it was a huge – because he was able to do spring practice at Kentucky. Yeah, early enrollee and everything. So that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, so, so how – it's kind of crazy because it's like you've never played this game when you were, you know, you were a little girl. I didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, you so see, you never had the opportunity. So, so with you getting into this, was it kind of like intimidating as, as you know, getting into the game of football? It was very intimidating. So how I got started was um, my husband. Well, when Ty ended up starting as a freshman in high school, which was unheard of, and my husband was coaching at a different team at a different school. And he decided to step down because he wanted to watch Ty on Friday nights as opposed to watching him on Monday. Because we thought he was going to be playing on Mondays or Thursdays or whenever the freshman or JV was playing. Right. And um, he took that season off. And then a middle school position came open that I coached at. So I have – I coached girls basketball. I have, I have two city championships with girls basketball, undefeated season. And I have two state championships in track at Crawford Middle School. There we go. There we go. Um where we coach. So that's where my coaching experience came from. And so when my husband um, came home and, and talked about the middle school position coming open, of course, I was I was all for it because I know he loves coaching. But when he came home and had accepted it, he said he made me his assistant head coach. And that's I was dumbfounded because my husband is a legend. He's a great coach. He's known very well in Lexington. And across the um, the state, he was he's he went to Bowling Green High, um, had a lot of offers. Also played at the University of Kentucky, so he's very well known as well. And so it was an honor for him to make me his his uh, head, his uh, assistant head coach. So I am I know the first in Lexington, the first female coach on any team in Lexington or Fayette County. 
And I think this past season, um, I think there might have been one other female coach here in Louisville. Other than that, I think I'm one of maybe two in the whole state of females that are coaching on the wow, team. Wow, that's and, awesome. And that's we, awesome. You know, you know what I mean? And that's what, you know, uh, uh, inspiring, you know, the, the little girl, you, you know what I mean? The ins- inspire them and maybe they want to just – play the game of football you know like I, I told you my goddaughter ayana she she loves the game of football it's just you know now she's ninth grade tenth grade she's kind of a little intimidated but she's a wrestler you know so that's why i was like just do it girl just just jump out there and just try it you know what i like about um football and most of our my players most of them started off with flag so they kind of got introduced to it with flag football and then they transitioned into um, tackle football as a matter of fact um, Campbellsville is the only school right now that has flag. And I reached out to that coach and was like, hey, I'm going to be recruiting your girls when they're done because it's it's like a natural progression from flag football into tackle. You, you're just putting on pads, and then you just have to learn how to take a hit and how to give a hit. <laughs> you know, but that's very intimidating for um, um, a lot of the girls. Um, we, we've had some that come out, and we thought that they were going to – pan out really really well they were very athletic they look good um in in shells um but when once we put the pads on and started hitting it was a different it was a different story so the fact that these girls are still out here and are are willing to put on pads is 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 phenomenal for me right and and in lexington i know here in louisville uh they have that big uh flag tournament for the girls do they have something like that over there in lexington we don't have nothing like that in lexington matter of fact um i someone from i think our pal reached out to me and asked me if i would help to to establish a a girls flag football league in lexington nice and are you gonna do that oh absolutely oh nice okay yeah if you never like i like i tell like like i told you before uh, I, i'm an open book man we will come out we'll support you guys and that's the big thing is is getting these girls to be comfortable coming out and, and having the voice to actually say yo i want to play the game of football okay. you know and that's 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 kind of like nerve-wracking for them it is um i think what I know you asked me about my platform with um, with Hits and Heels. One of the things with Hits and Heels I also like to do is educate women, and especially like moms and single moms on the game. So um, I did a podcast with uh, Christy Thomas, who's, who does the, comics, the color um, on the field at the UK Games. And she and I were are talking about doing a women's clinic um, just so that we can help, help, help the girls, help the moms and help women. But I just know how much it helped my relationship with my husband and how much fun we have. And I, I want everybody to experience that. And I think that a lot more women would enjoy the game if they understood the game more. Right, right. And I will actually uh, put her, um, Terry's uh, Twitter, or X, I'll put it right here so you can go uh, and follow. Uh, now, what platforms do you use uh, uh, mainly for all your content? And for, like, sharing uh, Derby City Dynamite stuff. Okay. I'm mostly uh, – I have my Hits and Heels um, Facebook page. Um, you can catch me on uh, Terry Mims Bryant on uh, Facebook. I'm on that most of the time. But I am Coach Terry Bryant on Instagram and at, at Coach T on X. Okay. Yeah, Coach T. I'm very I'm, – I'm, I'm excited about being here, man, because I was – you know, I was kind of intimidated. You know, I'm like, man, you, you know, coming and talking to, you know, a, a, a female coach that knows the game. You know what I mean? It's like, man, I better not slip up because you're going to put me in put me in my spot. <laughs> not at all. I, I think um, it's just fun having conversations and being able to be in that spot. It, it was intimidating when I was coaching, especially my first season with my husband, I was a little intimidated because I, I was in, insecure about the knowledge of, of what I did know because there is still a lot that I don't know because I didn't play the game. Um, but I, I just remember, um, I think my my favorite story is we were um, a game away from making, I think we, I think we were in the playoffs um, and we were in the fourth quarter and we were, we, it was 6.33 left in the fourth fourth quarter and we were down 14-6 and so I went up to my husband and I said um I think you need to help out your offensive coordinator with the clock management because we need to score and he looks at me and so when he looks at me he's processing um and 
Somehow he called timeout. We get the ball back. We score. Somehow we call timeout. We get the ball back, and we're in the championship game our first season. And it, and then he told me, he said, that's the reason why you're here. He says, because you do know the game, and I trust you, and that's the reason why I made you my assistant head coach. And from there, my, my confidence level yeah, did kind yeah. of go up a little bit. That's awesome. Now let's get into this uh, Derby City Dynamite. Yes. You, you know, I mean, you got – I just talked to the owner – Beautiful person, man. Awesome. And I'm ready to do whatever you guys need, man, to get you guys out there. Uh, but the history that, that I just learned, it's, it's crazy. Um, but but let's let's shine some light on, on some of your, your, your players that, so, that will be, well, your, your rookies and, and your veterans. Okay. So um, we have lots of, rook, you know, we get rookies. So for, last year was my first season. Um, one of the things about Derby City Dynamite that a lot of people don't know is in 2021, they won the the Division Three. So when when you come into um, our league, the, the the WFA or the Women's um, Football Alliance, um, you have like a rookie level, which is kind of like maybe junior college or NAIA, and then you have Division Three, then you have Division Two, and okay. then you have the okay. pro level. Okay, so we won. They won the Division Three National Championship, which was played in Canton. And then in 2022, they lost by one point in the National Championship for the Division Two. And so um, we're still in Division Two, and we're looking to, um, to get back to Canton this year. But we have players that have been playing for years. We have um, um, Angie Embry. She's actually one of our law enforcement here in, in Louisville. And she plays middle linebacker, and she's also one of my uh, halfbacks, and she's a beast. Um, she's my, she's actually my husband's favorite player um, because he's a defensive player, <laughs> a defensive coach, of course, and um, and sh and she's just amazing. Um, another one of my, um, my, I try not to have favorites, but it's hard not to. Um, is is no is Nicole um, Lockett? Um, Nicole just came back from um, Bogota, so they got asked to play on an international team because of their skill level and she went down there and got a, a MVP and she was at another another tournament and I think in August and got MVP and and so she's she's she should be an offense coordinator like she can I think she can go on any high school team here in in Louisville and be an offensive coordinator because she just her knowledge of the game is unbelievable love it yeah it's unbelievable on both sides of the but she could really be an offensive coordinator Nice, nice. That that's unbelievable, and, and and that's that's the crazy thing is like I, I feel I feel like a jackass because I'm saying this because you're like you don't, I, you don't see the, like the female, uh, coach. You know what I mean you on the side. Like you don't you see don't. it. So when you see it, you know like Michigan, they have they have one up mm -hmm. there, and and it's crazy, and, and it inspires me because I'm like man, you know like my goddaughter, she could do that. You know, and that's what it, that's what it's about is is seeing you you know on the sideline, and and that sends a message to to people. Yeah. So when when, when I'm I'm with my middle school team, I I do get like when, when we're in the line after the game, and there was there has been a couple of coaches that was shook my hand. And they were like, oh, I thought I I was wondering you should coach, and I didn't realize that you were actually a coach. Everybody thinks I'm a team mom or I'm a, <laughs> you know, a trainer or something, and I'm just on the sideline just just barking out orders. Um, and so until they realize that I'm actually one of the coaches, it's, you know, they are, they're, they're over, well, they're, yeah, they're excited too. Um, I, uh, another, one of my best stories, I guess, as a coach is uh, they used to have the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic here. They had one here in Louisville a couple years ago, and nope. Coach um, Ed Edgeron had just won the national championship, and I was the only female at this coach's clinic. And I tell you what, he, he looked like he was looking at me the whole time while he was talking. And I, and lo and behold, as soon as he got done, he met me coming down the stage, and he he just told me just how glad he was that I was there. And then I loved how I was welcomed by a lot of the guys. I mm -hmm. think I went to a breakout session, and I came back, and the guys had saved my seat where I was sitting at and it, you know, there was some there that was looking at me side eye and, and I, and I even got, I think I was the only coach that got a, my player. I got, I got my son, his Tennessee offer at that, at that clinic, because at that time it was, um, what was his name? He, the one that got, the one that got fired before him, he had came, 
and sat down because we got there early and was like, hey, what are you doing here? And I was like, here we go. <laughs> right? I said, I'm a football coach. And, and so he asked for my story just like you did. And I told him, and then I pulled out my phone and I said, you need to look at my son. And then he looked, he saw a couple of videos that I had and went and talked to somebody and he came back later and he said, I'm offering your son a scholarship to the University of Tennessee. And so when I called um, my son and my husband, they didn't believe me until the offer came through that Monday. And so that, you know, I've had some good experiences so far. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and you know, coach was coaching up somebody when we came in. You know what I mean? Yeah. You seen you seen your receiver drop the ball, and you're like, yo, hey, there we go. Make the diamond, okay? With the balls down here, put the pinkies together. <laughs> so coach is coaching, man. It's awesome. Uh, now, now, do you have, like, tradition, like, like with this team, do you guys have like a tradition? Do you, you guys do, or is it just come together, play ball, and then just leave? Um, I don't think we have any traditions, but we are. Um, so after games, we are sponsored by Rail Yard and Billiard. So after our games, we we do go there, or even on practices on Saturdays, we do try to go there and, and just hang and out, hang out after practices on Saturdays. And uh, and after and definitely after games. Nice, nice. That's awesome. I just got a few more questions, Coach. And we'll get you. I know it, it's raining outside. It's nasty out, but they're here. They're they're actually inside uh, uh, today. Today. Now, now, how do you get like uh, like how did you get the hook up with, with like all your facilities? I mean, just like anything else, you just got to pick up the phone and just call. So we we were using a different facility um, with um, he was a he was a trainer. Um, you might know him, and the roof caved in, and so he had to go look for a different facility. And so no, this this is the first time we've used this, and this you know, so we just had to come to the gym. But we prefer to be outside. But it was just really really pouring today, and we don't want anyone getting sick because we're getting ready to have a couple of um, we have a couple of scrimmages. Matter of fact, March we we have a scrimmage I think almost every weekend in March um, coming up. So I think this Saturday coming up is our last really really free um, practice outside of the Tuesdays and Thursdays for us to prepare because we got to get ready for those scrimmages. And yeah, we'll and get ready. Your, your season's coming up then. Our season comes up. April 27th is our first game, and we travel to Grand Rapids. Okay. And and where would you play? Uh, you're, you're playing here in Louisville. Yes, at Holy Cross High School. And I at think Holy the Cross. games will be at 5 o'clock p.m. Okay, on, on Saturdays. On Saturdays? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and And – I should have I should have asked the owner this, but it how how like do you guys fundraise? You looking for sponsors? Yeah. How 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 can how can they reach out to you? Okay. Yeah. Um. DerbyCityDynamite.com should be the website. Um. There's also um, Derby City uh, Dynamite. I think Women's Tackle Football on Facebook. Um. So they should be able to to definitely reach those two. Um, we're always looking for sponsors. We would love to have corporate sponsors. Um. The the business is set up as a nonprofit. And so she, she's not making any money. Um, the players is pay for play. It's not like anything like they have to pay to play. And so there's a fees involved for them to, to cover the fees. So it covers the their uniforms, but it also covers the field, the facilities that we have to, to use. Um, like when we're at Seneca on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, we have to pay to get the lights on so that we can have some place in the evenings to, to practice. And then... Um, and then, of course, when we go, when we're at Holy Cross, we have to pay for the officials. We have to pay for, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of those things. So we we we're really big on fundraising. Okay, um, okay. So yes, if you can do anything uh, uh, to help uh, Derby City Dynamite, uh, they would appreciate it. Uh, it's been a, and 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 I'm gonna tell you some coach right here just came from from Lexington to come here and coach, and you do that Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. Yes. Wow, so you're you're putting some miles on your car. I I, I have, and that's and then um, I think track practices. I, I'm still coaching track, so I'll Tuesdays and Thursdays I'll go to track practice. Get out of, after I've worked all day, get out of track practice, and I'll come up here. But that's how dedicated I am, and that's how much I love this team. And um, when you get to know know the players, and when you come out and play, you can go on YouTube and and look up Derby City Dynamite. Our our two championship games are on there. And when you watch those games, or even some of our games from last season. Um, You'll, you'll be impressed. Like, you can't tell you're watching a bunch of women. That's it's, awesome. It's real, it's oh, now, it's growing up, 
You know what I mean? I usually start with this. You know what I mean? You have those people that that kind of molded you to who you are today. You know, do you do you want to shout out any like your mentors or just the people that 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 support you? Um, I think my husband and my kids are probably my biggest supporters, um, especially my husband. Again, I would not be in this space if it wasn't for him. And and I think he, I, I probably don't give him enough credit because there are not a lot of. I mean, have you ever heard of a male coach that put his wife on his staff? Like, I think we are the only husband and wife duo across the nation that's coaching football. Yeah. Because there are not a lot of – because most women don't know the game. Right, right. N- not to the extent that they need to know in order to really be able to coach. And so, um, I, you know, th- him, my my son, you know, Ty gets to our games as much as he can, and my, and my daughter as well. I have a, do- a, a grown daughter that's in uh, – lives in Chicago. So she – those are my definitely my biggest supporters, um, but but my team. I lo- I just love how my team has embraced me because um, I am their. Fr- I mean, they've been around since what she say twenty twelve. Yeah, and I'm their first female coach. That's awesome for this team. That's for awesome. Team. Yeah, yeah, and and like like the coaching staff is it made of like oh oh like ex high school players, college players, or or how's the how's the staff? Okay, so our head coach. Um, was a quarterback at Western Kentucky. Um, and then uh, Collie played uh, football at Pike. He's from Louisville. Um, Coach Jay played – well, they, of course, I think Coach Jay – I can't remember. I think he played college as well. Um, so most of them are ex-college players. Yeah, so so you got knowledge out here. Knowledge. And, you know, and I was, I was going to say something funny too. It's like if I told my wife what a two-eye is, she'd be like – She'd be like, I don't know what I don't know what it is. is. Yeah, I don't know. Four-eye. I don't know. Right. Wait, you wear glasses or something? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she'd be something like that. Right. But but it's it's very inspirational. And that, that's why I reached out to you because i seen you on your podcast. So I, And, and, I, and I, I follow you on Twitter. So it, it's just I'm, – I'm so happy that, you you know, you took the time. Uh, and to jump on the podcast because I want to do as much as I can for for the the women's game and, and just just know that you know what I mean I'm here to to support them and and the platform is your guys you know I'm doing a lot of high school right now uh, I'm trying to just reach out and just get content out whoever wants it and 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 I'm excited I'm excited about your podcast uh, but yeah go ahead and tell them your your uh, your ch- your channel again on YouTube. Uh, hits and heels hits and heels and they can find you on uh, twitter, on twitter facebook yes on, i'm on everything coach terry coach terry bryant or just terry bryant you, i should be able to come up okay cool i appreciate you no, very much i appreciate you having us um it, it definitely means a lot when uh, of course the women's game can't go forth until men start um putting it out there or anybody put it out there mm-hmm. again we've been around this long and there's still people that still don't know that we exist and, and we, we, we need as much press as we can get. And we appreciate you so much for going out of your way to, I mean, <laughs> to, to make this happen. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And, and like I always say, everyone has a story. I'm here for them to tell it. Cleats to Whistle podcast. <laughs>